Story time! Story time! It's story time! I'm, I'm, uh... This story is by Michael De Silva's short stories that are written for kids and mine and adults alike. Well, it's the second story of the of the summer season season of summer madness, and this story has to do with this spiritual experience. How often does one have a spiritual experience in their lifetime? Well, many people should be able to say, if they are closer to God, they should be able to say that they had more than many, or several. But really, truly, most people, if they're lucky, they may have only one. Let me explain. Sometimes our emotions and our mind can play tricks on us more times than others, right? Well, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, when we have a spiritual experience, only happens about one time, truthfully, in our lives. However, God will do some, will do a lot of supernatural things in our lives. Sometimes we can be witness to know it, to to be witnesses of it, and other times we can not be witnesses of it because it occurs over hundreds of years beyond our time. But today we're going to talk about a story about a young family that had a supernatural experience in their life. They went to this campground. It was located in Ashland, Virginia. Many people from all over the world came there and still go there to this day. It's a real campground in Ashland, Virginia. And many different faiths come there, both Pentecostal, and different different types of faith come there, but mostly Pentecostal walks of faith. And lady there runs it, and she's a preacher there. And uh, she's started this thing since probably I would say the early or late early eighties. I would say early yeah early eighties. And the camp has really grown leaps and bounds there. And there's a family that stays on the campgrounds there, and of course. God has definitely seen, even though they're evangelicals, and I'm from a different type of faith, I have seen many things happen on the grounds that were supernatural. By God, somehow, they had the monies to pay to build those buildings, to get them all built up. And now those buildings now, we're looking at from when I was there on 2007, now 2014, seven years later, have been completed. And it looks like a wonderful campground. And it has cabins there, good beds to sleep in. And, of course, the people are really nice there. Like I said, there's people that come from all over the world just to hear the gospel. They go there when they're on farewell, though, and they go there for training, and they prepare people there to be equipped for his service so that they can go out into the world all over, like places like Africa, Norway, Sweden, Tanzania, Ganda, in Africa, that is. And, of course, in places in Europe and other places in the world, Finland, India, just to name a few. And many people from many different nations come there to be prepared and to learn and to be taught about the ways of how to preach and learn how to go out to be missionaries and go out to spread the word. There's something that we can learn from the Pentecostal community is that when you go out to this camp, or when you go out to any camp, the one thing that we can learn as Christians from the Church of Christ body is that we need to be more on fire and more mission-oriented. You know, I think we fail in a lot of churches. We don't do very well when it comes to witnessing or being missionary-oriented. Centered churches like Jesus has taught us in the book of Acts and also taught us in the book of Romans and also taught us in the Gospels how to be mission-centric-oriented. It's so important. That's where we fail, where the Pentecostals sublime us all the time. That's the one thing they do the best, is they're mission center oriented. Why can't we be that way? We should be that way in the Christ body. Since we are all Christ's body, there's many different denominations, but when we follow the true doctrine of the Bible, we are we belong to Christ's church. And about the family, this family's been there since the early days when it first began. Now they have grown, and now they're still there doing the work. A daughter there, 
She's probably in her mid-20s, late 20s. And I don't know if she's married. I mean, she's not a bad-looking lady as far as that goes. She's a brunette. She's pretty. But uh, I don't know if she's married, but she should be. But, you know, she does the work. She's dedicated there. Her whole family's dedicated to help run that campground for the lady that found it. And, uh, you know, it's been there for about 20-some years now, about 20, almost 30 years now. So it's been there almost three genera- three decades. And uh, the whole family there that is there to help run that camp does a real good job. And as I said, the family that went there, well, they were low on funds, and they went there. And they had no idea how their money was going to be pay, paid to pay the mortgage. They go to this camp. Three people that go at the night service, they all pray around them. And they all ask that God would move in a major way to seed them the money so that their bills could be paid for that month. Because at first they were really going to lose their house. The bank was sending foreclosure notices. But they go on there, and God moved, and they prayed, and they were faithful. And that's why God acted and moved. So there was a spiritual experience that happened there at that campground that started there. But because of their faith, God followed through because they did it without ceasing and the praying and fasting. And they did. And they did that because they knew that if they didn't do it, they would not have had that need met, and it would not have been met. But because they were faithful, God demonstrated his faithfulness through his promises that those who diligently seek and do the work for him will be blessed in all different ways. Sometimes not always in financial, but in other times it is in financial. In this case, it was financial. Their bills were somehow paid. A lot of people there didn't know their needs, but people were praying about it. And apparently they heard about that there was a family there that really needed help. And many people gave $100 bill donations to help them to seed that money, to be able to, to be able to do the work of the Lord. And because of that fact, that work was then done because people came together of different faiths and still showed compassion and gave, gave faithfully and challengingly for the work of the Lord. See, that's something that we can learn from this, you know, and that's what we can know and be glad about, that when God does something supernatural and does something out of the ordinary, we know that God is in control and that God uses people a lot of times to accomplish that very task. So it's so important, boys and girls, that when you think all hopes are lost and you have a mission or a ministry idea, Always take it to the Lord and ask him to guide you through it. And where people don't come through, because a lot of times they don't, because they have judgments and they have all kinds of legalistic ideas, or they don't think you're capable for the task. If God has anointed you to do a task, by golly, you will do that task because God has anointed you. And therefore, just like that family's bills and needs were met, your task will also be Granted, because of the anointing pouring of the Holy Spirit and because of your faithfulness and your diligence and doing the work for the Lord, regardless of what others had to say and what other people had to scoff about what you did. Because people do that all through the course of history. Many people do that. But then if people gave up, then that ministry there at the campgrounds in Nashville, Virginia would have never taken off. It would have never got to where it is to this day. So you think about that. This is a short story on a supernatural experience that can really happen to you if only you have little faith. Show your faith. Don't be like the disciples where they got scared in the boat and they didn't have the faith. And Jesus said, you have little faith. You could have been calm and I would have calmed the storm. But he was testing them to see how their faith is. God does that likewise to us today through all kinds of different circumstances. And when you get blessed, don't tell people about it. Wait until the blessing happens, and then you can talk about it. But don't go and brag about it and say, well, don't get angry or jealous at me if I get blessed because I get blessed more than you. Because that is not, A, a Christian attitude. That's like saying, na-na-na-na-na-na-boo-boo, I'm more spiritual and better than you. 
So therefore, if I get blessed in your doo-doo, you know, you don't do that. You know, you don't have to tell people that, you know, because Christians, if they're true Christians, aren't going to get mad, just like I said to this individual when he said it to me today. Uh, you know, they're not going to get mad. They're going to be happy for your blessings. And I hope he gets blessed lavishly. But the thing is, you don't go to saying it like that, you know, that someone's going to get jealous because you get blessed. Because you've gone to a campground and somebody prayed with you saying that you're going to get blessed does not necessarily mean you're going to be blessed in the way you think you're going to be blessed. That's financially. Like I say, God does bless you in many different facets and ways. But the thing is, boys and girls, when God blesses you with something, don't be thinking about yourself. Don't be thinking about doing, when you do stuff, don't do it to get something in return. When you give somebody a ride somewhere and you don't ask for money, or when you give somebody, or when you give somebody money, don't be thinking you're doing this so God can bless you because God does not bless somebody who's selfish or an Indian giver. Like, oh God, you know, I gave that money to that person last week or I gave that food to somebody you owe me. Some Christians think that's the way it works. But when you have that kind of attitude, God doesn't bless you like that because you're just doing it for selfish motives or selfish ambition. You need to give with a cheerful heart. And therefore, that's when God really blesses you because that's where you give without expecting anything in return. That's what true blessing is really essentially all about. Not what you could get or make somebody jealous a blessing comes from God when you truly seek after him and his righteousness, and therefore the blessings come down from heaven to you. But of course, most blessings you don't receive here on this earth. Oh no, Pastor Mike, Preacher Michael Evangelist, why are you saying that? Because the Bible says that. Most blessings you don't even get here at all. Only a very little bit trickles down from above, from heaven, that you get here on earth. But the ones that you do get here, helps remind and reassure, grant you that you know that God is ever faithful and will bless you if you remain and stay faithful. That's why God blesses those who earnestly seek diligently after him. Think about that. So that's a story about a divine, supernatural experience that's spiritual. And you all can experience it too. I'll see you later with another short story from Michael De Silva's from New Hunter Church of Christ. See you later now. Remember, give cheerfully. And you, too, also can reap blessings. Give without expecting. That's what makes the blessing happen. See you later.